we thank you for your kindness to us, that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. As we're coming into church today, where I love to be, worshiping with the family, whether you're here in person or joining us online, welcome. So glad to be with you. You know, at the beginning of the year, um, God put in my heart to share, and, and we talked as a family, just about, I really absolutely believe that this is the year, 2022, where God's called us to love well those that are struggling with mental health issues. I think that there's a purveyant grace that God gives when people are in that season. And so as I was praying, you know, it's interesting because all of the songs from this morning were right in line with moving towards that. And so mental health and well-being, I think the Lord wants to do amazing, miraculous things in that area this year. And, you know, as I was thinking about it, praying about it, you know, the spirit of fear is behind so many. You can have a seat. You can have um, a spirit of fear will stir up certain things. And the enemy will take the path of least resistance. And I feel like God's called us to uh, come alongside those that are struggling with mental health issues. It, and they manifest in different ways. And all of us know somebody, or maybe we are someone, that has an area that we're struggling with. And I just wanted to share 2 Timothy 1.7. It's familiar to so many of us. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And with those things comes peace, that incredible peace that passes understanding. And I... I just feel a call, if we can, for a minute as a family. I want to pray for people that are, whether they are right here with us or online or when we are with them during our regular work days. I pray that God would give you their face, the person that he would have you pray for. The fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. So let's just take a minute. And let's pray for them. Pray for health, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and that they would know the love of God. Father, you're so good. So just go ahead and pray for them. I absolutely believe this is the year of breakthrough. Thank you for your kindness that you reach out to us no matter where we are. And you say, take my hand. I'll help you cross over this and go into the promised land that I've had for you. Where there's healing, provision, joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, we pray for those beloved people in our lives that the enemy has wounded. And we break off the enemy's attack on them in Jesus' name. We speak peace, love, joy, healing, and restoration. Lord, let families be made whole. I see this picture, and it's kind of interesting. There's oftentimes when I've visited with people, had the honor to visit with people that are in a season of of um, a difficult mental health. They often describe that as feeling like they're afloat in the ocean and just they can't get a grip on anything. And, um, and also behind a gate. And so I just, as I was praying this morning, I saw this picture and it was so encouraging. I felt like God said, you are completely, every person here that carries the name of Jesus Christ, carries the Holy Spirit inside of them and has given their life to the Lord. He says, I've empowered you to reach for them. 
show love and mercy. See them how I see them. And so I just saw this picture a minute ago, and it's like there was this huge, there was like an estate, and it had a really tall fence, but it had, you know, uh, wrought iron bars, and those that were, there were people that were trapped inside, and God just said, go get them. And it was the coolest thing. I just saw people that loved the Lord, they ran up, and they just reached through the bars, and it was amazing, the bars moved. You just go, oh, well, that was a lot easier than I thought. And I just saw as people crossed through, there was like this curtain, and when they crossed through, all of a sudden, joy was restored. And they could start to recognize the lies that the enemy had put before them. And they were based in fear. And so it was just like coming into the light of God's love. It rinsed those things completely off of them. And joy was restored. Then I saw them stop, turn, and start grabbing other people. You know, if our God be for us, who can be against us? And so, Father, I just pray your blessing throughout this valley. Lord, let every person that feels torment, let them be free in Jesus' name. We speak freedom in Jesus' name. Let them know that they are loved beyond measure. And that there's always a place for them. You're so good. So good. And we are so thankful. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying. You guys are awesome. You always pray. It's so good. So thanks, worship team. You're the best. And so uh, I just want to take a minute and say good morning. Welcome home, all of you. If you're new to Grace, fill out a card. Throw it in the box and back. We'd love to connect with you and pray for you and uh, come alongside you. And I just wanted to go through a couple of different announcements, kind of like home business here. And uh, let's see. So starting on March 2nd, is uh, Wednesday the 2nd, starts Lent, 40 days of Lent, leading up to Resurrection Sunday. If Lord put something on your heart to pursue him for during that time, that's awesome. I'll give you some ashes if you'd like. <laughs> or come and I'll pray for you. So, um, quick note, Celebrate Recovery is not happening tonight. Uh, the Ots are hanging with family, and they will be back uh, next weekend. So, that's great. Um, men's Bible study on Thursday night here. That's going really well. Prophetic prayer, Mondays. It starts at 5 p.m. over in the fellowship hall. That's happening. Invitation to prayer, is that happening next weekend? On Friday? Good. That's wonderful. So, 5.30, we are praying church. And let's see, so next Sunday is actually not, it's usually Soap Sunday, but this next Sunday, actually, we're going to have our annual business meeting. Yes! <laughs> okay, come on, that was super fake. <laughs> just like, what? We're such an open book church here all the time, it's just like people go, like, why? You tell us all the time. It's like, yeah, okay, good. But according to law, we have to have a meeting, so come. Okay. It's fun. It's short. Yeah, everything else. It's not, it's not a boring meeting, so just come. You'll really like it. You're going to be so encouraged to hear what the Lord's been doing and just the other things that are happening, so that's great. And let me do one other thing before. I think I'm all done with that. I'm also very excited because at the beginning of the year, one of the things that we shared as we were kind of casting vision for this year, mental health was definitely on our radar. We feel like God's calling us, okay, be fully present in situations and, and receive people. And we've had opportunities even throughout this last week to say, oh, someone is sharing with us that they're actually having uh, a few people, having a rough mental health day. And so we're excited to connect with them, trying to connect with them. Um, call me. <laughs> and, uh, but the other thing we talked about is really being fully present in the community. And we love our community, and we love people, and God loves people. And so we want to create opportunities for everybody to be a part of that. And uh, I'm going to invite Stacy just to come up and tell us. Just I cleaned the mic. So <laughs> I'm not worried about that. <laughs> All right. Hi, Grace family and friends and everyone online. Um, so I am just excited to give you a little sneak peek of something that um, the pastors and I have been working on and planning and discussing and figuring out. 
um, and that is a way to uh, start something new here that would give uh, families um, and anyone who wants to an opportunity to get plugged in and we haven't thought of like a catchy little name for it yet but uh, we will meet a couple times a month um, our target is to start in actually in April so you'll be hearing more about this in detail in March so I'm just kind of giving you a sneak peek today but the idea is that every month we have different a couple of different um, either in reaches uh, helping people within our body or outreaches helping people in the community and they're going to be different and they're going to be varied and the idea is is that no matter um, what your experience level or your your heart or whatever that you will find um, a time to be able to participate if you wish to um, I felt like God had kind of put this in my spirit when I, I see a need in a lot of different churches. People want to get plugged in, but maybe they don't know how. You know, maybe they're, they don't feel like they're a talented singer or a musician or something like that. But they, they still have a heart for people, and they just didn't really know what to do. Or, you know, when we're raising families, it's like, can be uh, a little overwhelming to think that to, to volunteer and be involved, you have to... Um, come once or twice a week for something, right? So this is set up to where it's meant to be maybe more like a once a month or even less if that's too much for you. Um, and so I'm just super excited. It's just a way that we can come together, pull together, help each other out, use uh, so many different talents and, um, and strengths that everyone has. In the meantime, if you have an idea of um, a family that you know that has um, a real need just to be visited, to be loved on, um, to have a little garden work done in their front yard or whatever that might be. Um, we are open to suggestions. We'll have uh, April figured out, but then I want to kind of plan like one month ahead of time so we always know what's coming. So we are open to suggestions and see me after service anytime to talk about that if you want to. All right, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good. Super exciting. Who does not want to go out and get your hands dirty? I mean, uh, okay, no, put your hand down, Rick. Okay. <laughs> like dude it was kind of rhetorical okay <laughs> anyhow but we would love to look for opportunities to just get out there and it's a great opportunity for family connection it's like if you've got littles I'll tell you what if you say hey let's go work on the yard for somebody and, and they are all over it and we want to encourage that okay I don't think I have anything else right now so all right I'm gonna release the kids Can you hear me now? Turn the fob on, I heard. I do, actually. Praise God. Well, I'm going to receive the offering this morning. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, this passage is about having a right focus. How many of you know there's lots of things around you trying to grab your focus, trying to grab your attention? It's about putting God first place in our lives. Verse 21, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Whatever your, your treasure is, that has your focus, that, that has your attention, that has your gaze. Verse 22, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. The, the lamp of your body is your eye. The, the, the lamp is the source of illumination. The source of illumination for your life is what you are focusing on. If your focus is right, if your focus is on God, you will be filled with all kinds of revelation and spiritual understanding. Verse 23, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Wow, those are strong words. See, if your focus is wrong, in this case, on money or on, on things kind of a thing, if, if you take this verse in context... What he's saying is, if you are trusting in, nat in things in the, in the natural realm, rather than in your heavenly Father, 
if your focus is, is, is secured to this realm, he says your, your whole life will be filled with darkness. You might even think it's light, but it's actually darkness. And if it's darkness that you think is light, how great is that darkness? Verse 24, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or money. Now, please understand, there is nothing wrong with money. How many have discovered you actually need some to survive? There's nothing wrong with money. It's the wrong focus. It's actually the love of money. You know, uh, money is not the root of all evil. I've heard people say that. It doesn't say that. It says the love of money is what gets us off track. So this passage is reminding us as Christians of where our focus needs to be. One of the ways that God has given us to keep our, our focus right is giving. Honoring God with our tithe and with our offerings helps us to keep God in first place in our lives and allows us to trust Him to be our source and to meet our needs. So there's many ways to give. There's a box in the back. There's all kinds of ways to do it online and on app and stuff. But let's stand together. Let's make a, a declaration together as we get ready. I declare breakthroughs are coming in my life. Sudden bursts of God's goodness. Not a trickle, not a stream, but a flood of God's power. A flood of healing, a flood of wisdom, a flood of favor. I am a breakthrough person, and I choose to live breakthrough-minded. I am experiencing God, sorry, <laughs> and amaze me with his favor. This is my declaration. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Praise God.